my water just broke. I felt like things really intensified. She was right there and she was coming. It was, it was an amazing feeling. I'm gonna cry just thinking about it. I could feel her head. We heard her cry. We were squeezing hands and she was screaming. <laughs> I'm Bryn Hunt Palmer and you're listening to The Birth Hour. This podcast is designed as a safe place for women to come together to share their childbirth stories. Stick around and join us to hear informative and empowering birth journeys from women all over the world. This episode of The Birth Hour is brought to you by Baby and Company, a modern birth center built on evidence delivered with love. Go to babyandcompany.com or today's show notes page for more information. Today we're going to be talking to Tiffany and Tracy about Tiffany's birth at Baby and Company in North Carolina. Hi, Tiffany and Tracy. Thanks for coming on the birth hour today. Great. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Awesome. Let's have you both start off by telling us a little bit about yourselves and your family. Let's start with Tiffany. Okay. My husband and I are farmers. And so when we got pregnant, the idea of, you know, being in a hospital was like not something that I desired. The first thought I had, especially after going down like Instagram rabbit holes, would have been to have like a home birth with a midwife. But where we are, we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. So, um, you know, that wasn't really an option either. So when we found Baby and Company, I was just so excited. We took a tour and I just instantly started crying because I knew that that's like exactly what I wanted. That's such a good feeling to have. Oh, it was amazing. I just, yeah, and I can't believe that you know, it hasn't always been an option for everybody. So I'm just so grateful that it was available in our area. And, you know, I just like, I'm just so telling everyone about it, like as much as I can, because, you know, women, I just feel like they should be able, they should know that they have options, you know? Yeah. And Tracy, how did you get involved with Baby and Co? And just tell us a little bit about yourself as well. Yeah, so I'm Tracy. I'm one of the certified nurse midwives here at Baby and Company, Charlotte. Um, My journey to midwifery started at a really young age. Um, I knew in my heart I wanted to be a midwife since I was about 14 years old. So getting here has been the, you know, struggle to actually get here at this moment. Um, I found Baby and Company through an email um, through school, and it just kind of fit and fell into place. And I felt like it was meant to be. And I've never questioned my purpose here. So I'm really lucky, just like Tiffany, to know that something is right. Um, It's a really good feeling to know that you're doing what you're supposed to do. So Tiffany, tell us about finding out you were pregnant. And you told us a little bit already about kind of the birth plan that you chose. But let's just kind of go through your pregnancy in general as well. So this was my first pregnancy and I am 25. So, you know, my husband and I got married September of 2015 and people were like making comments like, oh, when's the baby coming? We're like, yeah, right. You know, that's just too soon. And then we just realized that, you know, sometime around in February, we got a new job. Um, We were hired to operate a farm for a family just south of Charlotte. And we just kind of looked at each other. We were like, you know, it's okay. We can have a baby now. Like we can start a family. And so it was just like cosmic, like the stars aligned and, you know, overnight, all of a sudden I got pregnant. Like I thought it would take a while. And I'm very grateful that, you know, I know like a lot of people struggle with infertility. And so I just, you know, we kind of thought it might take a while and it was just in a month's time, like I was pregnant. So, you know, the search began pretty quickly to like find out, I knew nothing. Like I read Ina May's Guide to Childbirth and that just really got me trying to find a way to have the baby naturally if possible. And so it's been a a quick, you know, life-changing year for us actually. It's like really just a year ago we were thinking about like, oh, can we have a baby? You know, so I know it's really hard for a lot of people, especially younger people to like try to plan to start a family. So this is kind of crazy to me, but we didn't have health insurance before we got this job that we had. So when I first found out I was pregnant, we didn't have health insurance. And so before I went to Baby and Company, I was trying to figure out like, oh, how am I going to like get started on, on my path? Like I didn't quite have a OB like where we were. We had just been living there for a little while. So I hadn't like gone to the doctor regularly. So I went to try to um, make an appointment and 
it was just so hard to get prenatal care, um, you know, without insurance. The OB that I did call and like try to make an appointment, it's like, oh, you have to pay upfront for your full maternity, like prenatal care. And that just was crazy. So I'm like, well, I don't, I know that I want to go to baby and company, but we weren't quite in the area yet. So then I'm like, well, how do I do this? And they're like, oh, well, you're going to have to call the um, health department. So I called the health department and they didn't have a, an appointment for a few months. And then she's like, okay, you're going to bring everybody's pay stubs and proof of pregnancy. And I'm like, wait, I thought that what I was doing was proving that I was pregnant. And she's like, oh, no, you're going to have to call the crisis pregnancy center. So it went from like, oh, so happy to be pregnant to like, oh, now it's a crisis. So then going to baby and company was amazing because the approach is just so different than, uh, you know, it was like celebrated and like everyone was congratulating me rather than acting like I was a helpless cause and in a state of crisis. I love that. So what was that first appointment like and what did your prenatal care look like at Baby and Co? Oh, well, it was just so much more personal, you know, I guess more than anything. Um, and I just feel like all the midwives at Baby and Company are just so compassionate and educated. It just felt immediately like home. I feel like I have a home away from home in a way when it comes to like, you know, even though they don't do pediatric care yet, I mean, I'm hoping they will in the future. I can still call like Tracy was my midwife, but Mary was also a midwife who I ended up having appointments with. Like they do um, schedule you with every midwife. So you know them uh, by the time you have the baby. But Mary, our schedules ended up aligning a lot more. And so, you know, I've called her with questions about my baby, my baby's name is Florence, by the way. And so I've called her with questions about Florence. And she actually, uh, was it yesterday or the day before? The day after Christmas, she came out to the farm because we just, I just feel like, uh, you know, I have a really close connection with her. And so, and not that I don't with everybody, but we do live an hour away. So, um, you know, it was, it was a drive for Mary to come out here and see the farm. But yeah, so I feel like I have a whole new new group of friends by having my baby at Baby and Company. Wonderful. And Tracy, is there anything you want to add about, you know, moms coming in either, I knew you had insurance at that point, but without insurance or just like kind of how payment plans can work at Baby and Co or birth centers in general? Yeah, I can speak a little bit about that. I'm not a pro in the financial department, um, but we have moms from all types of backgrounds and insurances. And, you know, we have private insurance plans. We have the more popular ones and self-pay, cash pay, all those things. So it just depends on the background and where they're coming. And we really try to work with each mom individually and come up with a good payment plan or financial plan that works for them. And it just depends on the type of insurance and what's covered. Some people are very fortunate that birth centers are completely covered under their plan and they're in network and then others, they're out of network. So they have to pay their deductible and out of pocket cost. Uh, it's very individualized and we work with all of them. Yeah. And I'll say, even though I have insurance now with my job, the birth center wasn't covered with the plan that we're on. So I did end up paying like self-pay out of pocket, but, and I don't know what it is for a hospital or, um, you know, I don't know the other options, but even out of pocket, it was just right at $5,000. So I feel like that's very reasonable for, you know, the different routes that you can take. Yeah, I would say I know it's different in all different parts of the country, but um, mm -hmm. birth centers right, and right. home births are, you know, often the total cost of them is just like the 10% that you would be paying of your insurance at a hospital right. birth, which I always like to point out to people when they say, oh, I can't do a birth center or a home birth because it's not covered by my insurance, but oftentimes it might end up costing the same. So yeah, pretty much the same as your deductible. Yeah. Great. Well, let's talk about your birth story now. Um, what were some of the first signs that you were going into labor? Florence did end up coming um, a couple weeks early. So I was so careful until I got, because you can't have um, your baby at Baby and Company unless you're 37 weeks. So I was so, is that right, Tracy? 37 weeks? Th that is. Yep. You okay. got it. So I was so careful that whole like 36th week because um, the super moon was coming up. And my husband had kept joking about how, like, oh, the baby's ready. Like, she's kicking and she's ready. And I'm like, oh, well, we have to, like, wait until 37 weeks because I was so hoping that I would be able to have my baby at Baby and Company. 
that weekend, actually, I was planning on meal prepping. So I had, it was Friday uh, that my water ended up breaking. So Friday morning, I was getting ready. I had like chickens thawing in the in the sink. Like I was going to be making all these chicken pies. So my husband could just like pop them in the oven. I also was trying to get like some Christmas stuff in order. So we raised forest raised pork. I rendered lard from the pigs to make soap for Christmas. So I was planning on doing all this stuff <laughs> that weekend. And I did a lot, but it had nothing to do with any of the stuff that I had been planning on doing. So it was Friday afternoon and it was like three o'clock. I went to use the bathroom and I like my water broke. So I'm like, immediately like went out of my mind you know just trying to like do things but like not really being able to do it because the thought of like what was about to happen was just starting to sink in and so I called my husband he was working with his crew on the farm like cutting trees down I'm like so I think my water's broken and uh you know it was kind of like a movie just all of a sudden like everything took a 90 degree or 180 turn and I started like trying to pack my bags but like you know, change the the socks that I was trying to put in my bag. I'm like, kept picking them up, but like not putting them in the bag. So it just took me a while to actually get ready. And I called Baby and Company and uh, they wanted me to come in because being a first time mom, they didn't want it to be like a false alarm. And so we went to Baby and Company around six o'clock at night. And so I hadn't started having contractions yet. So my water was broken, but I wasn't in labor. So uh, they sent me home to labor for a little while and uh we ended up going out to eat at a sushi restaurant because I'm like I had been wanting sushi like the whole time I was pregnant so I'm like all right finally like I'm gonna we're just gonna go eat sushi for a Friday night it was great because we we think we're gonna try to go eat somewhere and it's gonna be slam packed but this restaurant for some reason was like very empty in a way and they had a a woman playing a guitar and so it was just very surreal and then the sushi restaurant actually had this like um, fish tank with jellyfish in it so the whole time we were eating dinner which was delicious but the whole time we were eating dinner I was just like I felt like I was in slow motion with the jellyfish and like the live music and looking at my husband we were like crying like this is it we're about to have a baby and so we went home until around 1.30 in the morning. I started having like mild contractions. One of my really good friends from college, she's a massage therapist, like yoga instructor, just super chill, um, really good friend of ours. And so she came down and she actually gave me like a massage uh, reflexology. And so when she got down to my feet, there was a place in my foot where when she hit the pressure point, my stomach started turning. And so with the first foot, I thought it was just a coincidence. And then when she got to the second foot and my stomach started turning again, I knew that it was no coincidence. So if your water's broken and um, you're trying to get labor going, I would definitely um, suggest acupressure or reflexology to try to get that going. And so by uh, 4.30 in the morning, I was really into it, having strong contractions and we drove the hour drive to Baby and Company, which was the most miserable part of my labor, was the drive um, to Baby and Company. I could not sit in the seat. I was hugging a pillow with my feet on the floorboard, um, sitting like backwards while my husband was driving. And so we got to Baby and Company around 5.30 in the morning. And from there, I just, I just feel like uh, it blends at that point so we had a birth uh, photographer and videographer team. And uh, when I saw the video, the beginning of the video like has me still wearing my dress. And I feel like I just ripped my clothes off as soon as I got into Baby and Company. The midwife who was there when I first got there, Alexandria, um, I had been talking to her on the phone. And so she was there as soon as we got to the birth center. I just kind of like fell into her as I walked into the birth center and she checked my blood pressure and checked the baby's heart rate. And, and that was pretty much like as invasive as, uh, well, she did check me to see, uh, how dilated I was. I don't remember how dilated I was when I got in, you know, I kept wanting the midwives to check me, especially Tracy, like whenever, after I'd been laboring for a while and I started to get tired, like, I would be like, okay, like wanting to know if I'd made any progress. And, and she did so, so good with um, getting me off of 
were distracting me from the thought of like wanting to be checked to see how dilated I was. She'd be like, okay, like, yeah, we'll do that. And then she'd like walk away. And then by the time she came back, like it was something that I wasn't. Sorry. Oh no, that was perfect. Cause you know, like you don't, and that was something that I had like read, you know, about like, you don't actually need to be checked that often. And it increases the risk of like getting an infection and everything. So it was like, you know, I know that I was asking it, but like, really, I didn't want it. It was just, you know, like, yeah. Me you were only checked con- once. I mean, you were right. checked on admission, and then and then I checked you. I think you were like four, maybe when you got here, and then I checked you around nine, and you were seven, and then after that, your body. I mean, there was no reason right. you could clearly tell you were transitioning and go in the right direction. So right, and to me, I couldn't tell, and that was like my hesitation. You know, um, so I was in labor from one thirty in the morning until sometime, I guess, around eleven thirty. And I started pushing around 11.30, and my baby was born at 12. I was starting to feel the urge to push around 11.30, but I was hesitant to start pushing because I wanted to make sure I was fully dilated. But, you know, to after the fact, my husband telling me, like, oh, we could see your body changing and, like, the baby's head, like, starting to make its way down. But I wasn't sure, you know, and like didn't want to like mess anything up or like push too soon. Or like you said, you checked me around nine and I think I got back in the tub. Oh, so I thought that I was going to have this like super zen, uh, really quiet, like water birth where the baby just like slides its way out and like, you know, just not the case at all. I mean, I ended up like screaming and. Well, I was like moaning, really. I guess. Um, yeah, it was moaning. You weren't. You weren't really screaming. You were talking right. and moaning, and it was great. Yeah, yeah, it was great. But I didn't end up having the baby in the water like like I thought. But months before I um, actually had the baby, I had a dream that I was squatting, which was funny because. So, so this is like you know kind of funny. So we live in this tiny house right now. Um, it's. I don't even know if it's 500 square feet. And so we don't have a bathroom in our house. There is a bathroom that we use up in the barn, uh, which is not like far at all to go. But all summer I had been squatting to pee like outside around my house. And so I had this dream that I was squatting to have the baby. And that's exactly what what ended up happening. Because once I started to need to push, I realized that I needed gravity to help me uh, get the baby out. And so laboring in the tub felt amazing and it really took the pressure like relieved some of the pressure that I was feeling but um when it came down to it squatting was the only way I feel like I would have been able to get her out like when you think about all the different positions that you could be in being on my back was miserable I could not be on my back and that was part of the reason why I feel like I didn't um insist that I be checked because I was on my back and that was like really painful. I was preparing the whole time to have her squatting, like without even really thinking about it. What's that? There's like an Ina Mae Gaskin quote about if you squat 300 times a day, you'll have a fast labor. Oh <laughs> like, I guess when so. I just remember like every time she squatted, she'd be like, I, I feel everything opening. I feel it opening. And I'm like, yeah, I keep doing that. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I was so out of it. Like I mean, I barely looked at anybody. Um, I had my eyes closed pretty much from the time I got into Baby and Company. But I was able to because I felt so comfortable there. You know, I can't imagine that I would have been able to feel that comfortable. Like, I know hospitals are, like, you know, moving in the right direction and, like, changing. and But it was just so, such a comfortable place to be that I was able to, like, you know, I knew my husband was right in front of me. I knew that the two people, um, so I did have a doula and then my, the friend that gave me the massage, they were both at baby and company with us. So, you know, I just like knew that I was surrounded by people that I felt comfortable with. And I like having met Alexandria, Tracy and Mary, all the midwives who were there while I was in labor, you know, having met them before and like feeling comfortable with them, like I was able to really just let myself go and not have to be mentally there so you know I knew my husband was like by my side every time I reached out he was right there and then just having all these people surrounding me like supporting me 
like I did end up getting really tired around right after Tracy checked me, like around the hours like nine to 11, you know, if I wouldn't have had the support I had with my husband, the doula, my friend and the midwives there, you know, I could see that I would have gone to the hospital and, you know, had the medicine and had the epidural and like pain relief because I just got so tired that in my mind, I wasn't able to like have the strong mind that I had early on. Like early on, I was like, yeah, I can do this. Like, you know, this only lasts a minute here and there. And then it just got more and more intense. And as I got more tired, it got to be more of a struggle. But they were right there, like telling me I could do it, like reminding me to bear down and like focus my energy, like downward and out, you know. So uh, I would highly suggest a doula to anyone who's considering having a doula, uh, natural birth or not, you know, however you manage to get your baby out, you're still going to need the support, you know? Yeah, definitely. So is there anything, I mean, we kind of jumped to the end there. Is there anything you want to talk about specifically with like pushing or when she first arrived? Well, we didn't know the gender of the baby. So that was something that was motivating, uh, while I was in labor like who are you I'm gonna find out who you are like I mean I know I know like I felt your presence and I but I've been like so curious the whole time you've been inside me so when she finally came out it was just such a relief well I thought it was gonna be a boy like the whole pregnancy and so I had just gone and bought clothes like you know gender neutral but like leaning towards a boy and so when, whenever she came out I was like oh my gosh, it's a girl. And my husband actually caught her. Tracy was there for, you know, just in case, but he actually uh, was able to catch her as I was squatting. So it was just really special to be able, like, you know, baby and company, I never, I mean, my baby didn't even leave my sight, much less, like, she barely left my arms, like, just to be weighed and measured. And so I, like, never, she was never, like, out of my reach, really, which was really nice. Yeah, we like, we're all about skin to skin. Babies transition better being skin to skin. They regulate their temperature, their blood sugar. They transition better, breathe better. There's just a million reasons why skin to skin is effective at protecting those babies. You know, they've been living inside mom all this time and it only makes sense for them to be right next to mom afterwards. So we do skin to skin. Uh, Every mom stays a different amount of time. It's individualized care based on everything that happens. You can stay anywhere from four to 12 hours here at the center. And we monitor vital signs for the baby and the mom, depending on what's going on. It would determine how frequently we do them, but we're in there constantly. Um, you know, at Tiffany's birth, I felt like I lived in there. I wanted to be in there. It was just, you know, so much to do and so many things to see and teach. We're constantly teaching about when they go home with their new baby and how to how to handle things and what to look for. So we're going over all that teaching multiple times throughout the postpartum stay. Do you guys have prenatal classes as well to prepare them for those types of things? We do. We actually recommend, we have three classes that we recommend in the pregnancy and we recommend them usually to be done before term. So before 37 weeks, we would like them to be completed for education purposes. We recommend the breastfeeding class, the newborn class, and then also the childbirth education class or series. And those give all the tools and information needed. It kind of goes over things at Baby and Company and what we do here postpartum to prepare the parents for coming here for a birth. And then we let them know things to bring in the childbirth class. And then in the newborn class, we go over newborn care and, you know, basic basic things to watch for so they are prepared for that early discharge because that's one of the major differences between a birth center and hospital is that we're not keeping them here for 24 to 48 hours. We're you know, they're going home the same day and they need to be prepared to notice things because they're calling us if anything is wrong. Um, and we like them to have all that information ahead of time. And then we review it at the birth as well. And Tiffany, how was it um, transitioning to going home and how has your postpartum experience been? Yeah. Um, and so Baby and Company has made it very clear that they are available for anything that we might need. I mean, they, they're like, you know, almost hesitant to like give you over to your pediatrician. Really, they're like wishing that 
they were the ones taking care of the baby. But um, so I'm just very grateful that, you know, they are so um, available, but like knowledgeable, like I said, and because I did have an experience, you know, trying to find the pediatrician uh, that I trust to take care of my baby. Uh, after having all of my prenatal care with baby and company, um, I'm, I feel like my standard is much higher than what it would have been if I had just been at like a, in a hospital. You know, I, the first uh, appointment that I made with a pediatrician, I, I wanted to burn the place down really because I left and it was just like, I had just been at baby and company and I was just so disappointed at uh, the level of knowledge I felt like the pediatrician had or the way that she uh, treated me was just like not at all uh, how baby and company had had been treating me. So I was just like floored. Um, but since I have found a pediatrician that I love and so it's all good. I'm going to backtrack a little bit. But so we were talking about right after having the baby. I've and so like all these um, the memories are just like flooding my my brain now that we're talking about it. So I did hemorrhage after having Florence. That was another reason why being at Baby and Company was just so comforting and nice because they, Tracy and Mary were both like immediately on it. And like within a few minutes I was given Pitocin and, you know, I'm an advocate of midwives and home births and everything, but, you know, that would have been a, um, very stressful if I had been at home. So my husband in particular was like really worried about me. But being at Baby and Company, they just like handled it without like any hesitation or like that. And that's why like I've forgotten about it. There was like really no trauma associated with it. And then like for them to clean up everything after having the baby, like allowed my husband and I just to relax and spend time with the baby. And so we were just like in this nice white room, like, you know, like there was no mess that was ever made. I just can't say enough good things about Baby and Company. I felt so prepared, you know, even like before having the baby with the prenatal classes they offered and the instructor, um, you know, she was available by email with any, like for any questions that we had. And anytime you saw her, she would question like, have you done your homework? You know, like, have you been practicing labor positions? You know, so that really prepared me for uh, like when we were actually in labor, my husband and I knew the positions that I felt comfortable in. They just had every option there available. Like, you know, you could sit on the ball, you could be in the bed on your hands and knees, or you could be sitting in this chair and you could be um, in the shower or sitting on the birth stool, you know, in the tub. So they just have everything there available. Uh, like when you get tired of doing one thing, you can switch to the next. So I felt really prepared for the actual event itself. And I just want to say you were so great and cooperative and you were changing positions every few contractions. And I think that's why your birth went so incredibly smooth. And I know it seemed like forever to you, but it was it was perfect. It was just great timing. You moved all over the place. You used every inch of that room. Yeah, um, it was great. It was just you well, really thanks. utilized the tools that that we had available for you. So mm mm-hmm. I love hearing that. And I love when, you know, I feel like midwives just always make, especially first time moms. I remember my midwife was like, one of my favorite things is to see a first time mom, you know, give birth to her baby because it just transforms you. So I love having you both on today to kind of share that experience together. A major, yeah, huge transformation. Just, you know, from what I thought I knew while I was pregnant, gaining knowledge and like thinking that I you know, have all the information I need and then just being like hit with this wave of like, oh, you don't know anything <laughs> and, and like <laughs> exploring what it is to become a mother. And I just want to say as a midwife, I mean, a lot of people think, oh, you know, we're midwives. We see this every day. No big deal. But there are key moments in a midwife's career that really make her trust birth and you know, you always have those doubts in your mind if anything's going wrong or whatnot, but there are always moments in, in mothers that make you trust birth again or continue to trust birth. And so you're really key in that and is oh, really important. That's so great. Thank you. No problem. Are there any resources that you guys would want to share with listeners, books or classes, anything like that? Ina May's Guide to Childbirth, I feel like, should be in every curriculum for 
prenatal classes. It was just so empowering and uplifting to read the birth stories in the beginning. Uh, Like the first half of the book is people's birth stories, women's birth stories. And then the second half is just more uh, technical and you know, somewhat political, but even if you just read the first half and you don't want to hear about the <laughs> the politics of it in the second half, the birth stories in it are just so, um, they're exciting to read. You just get caught up in it. You can't get enough of it. And what about you, Tracy? Um, here at Baby and Company, we pull a lot of our theories and beliefs and the ways that we do things from so many resources, and we're very evidence-based. Um, I've heard great things about Ida May's book. I've read some of it myself. Uh, it does guide some of my practices that I do. And I think for speaking for every midwife, they usually connect with one particular resource or way and that kind of guides their practice. But we recommend, you know, birthing from within is a great resource Mm -hmm. to read. I really like pulling from a few different, uh, perceptions. And I think reading a couple different resources is a is is a great way to get all the knowledge you need and pick what you connect with and what works for you. Yeah, that was just what worked for me. (laughs) And it worked wonders for me. But uh and Penny Simkin, I like her too, the birth partner, my husband uh, read that. She's great. Yep. And then um Mindful Birthing, I think it's called. Yes. Um, It's great. Yeah. I like that one too a lot. So well, great. All of those, I think, have been mentioned before and are listed on our on our resources page. So um, I'll be sure to link to those from the show notes page as well. And I'm excited to share some of your photos and your video oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, Emily and Krista were the team that we had uh, a video and photographed the birth. And I'm so grateful that I did that because, like I said, I just, you know, I was able to completely let go and not worry like you know my husband really likes to take pictures so you know knowing that there was someone there whose job that was um if you're into it and you want it to be documented in that way was amazing so I'm so it's like such a treasure I don't I don't like value much more that I have than that right now I love watching it I always recommend birth photography um and I know it can be pricey but I think those pictures are so much more valuable oh than my gosh wedding pictures it's just the most definitely, important day <laughs> definitely so well do either of you want to share where listeners can connect with you online or they can just leave comments for you on the show notes page it's up to you um yeah I mean my Instagram handle is flower lackey um and so you can follow my journey a little bit through that I'm not like I'm not huge on it but uh I like to post so Raising a baby on a farm oh, sounds yeah. interesting oh, enough yeah. to me. That is. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yep, they can send emails through the Baby and Company website and, and address me if they want to, and they'll get it to me. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, both of you guys. I really enjoyed hearing your story. Thank, thank you for you. having us. Thank you again so much to Tiffany and Tracy for coming on the show today. Be sure to head over to thebirthhour.com to find their show notes page where I'll be posting photos and the video from Tiffany's birth, as well as some of the information that they shared. You can get more information at babyandcompany.com about their birth centers. You can connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Birth Hour. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed today's show, head to thebirthhour.com to sign up for our newsletter. And if you really like the show, please subscribe and leave a review in iTunes. I'm Bren Hunt Palmer, and you've been listening to another episode of The Birth Hour. Thanks again, and see you next week.